As Seventh-day Adventists, most of us know that imminently a Sunday law is coming. We hear all the online preachers talking about it and we read articles about it. But have we really read what the prophet Ellen G. White really has said about it? Join us now as we delve into her inspired writings and discover the real truth about the Sunday Law and what we have not been told concerning it. The half has not been told. In this four-part presentation series, we will be learning how to prepare spiritually, mentally and practically for these stormy times which is ahead of us. Hi and welcome back to Pioneering Again. Um, I just want to welcome back our viewers who've been watched the first one. I hope you found that a blessing and also I hope that you downloaded the stuff what was in the description box below so it can help you to understand this very important phase of Earth's history. Because we are at the end and uh, we're going to see some tremendous events taking place very soon. Again, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Gary Price. I'm the host, and today my guest again is um, the excellent Brother Twain. Um, and he's come to join us again to discuss the stages of the Sunday Law. Just a quick recap what we did last week, we discussed what brings in the Sunday Law. And Brother Twain, could you just give us a quick overview on how that actually happens, please? Well, the last, last, week we touch on the, what brings in the Sunday law and mm. we see it is um what you call um natural disasters mm. right so the bible says that when judgment in the land then the inhabitants will learn righteousness and so we see clearly that as calamities by land and sea is going to get more frequent and more disastrous yes then the people the common people not the pope not um not anyone is, but the common people are going to cause, are going to call rather, for a Sunday law to be enacted by law. Amen, Brother Twain. Thank you so much for refreshing us on what we discussed last week. Today, we're going to move forward now from that. And we're actually going to go into, because as we discussed last time, that there are actually three distinct stages to the Sunday law. And you're going to see this clearly outlined in the spirit of prophecy. Um, so what we're going to do first is to go through the very first one and also what the spirit of prophecy does is actually tells us how to act at each of one of these stages. And this is something that has not really been spoken about by anyone, but it's all in there. So we're just going to bring these truths to you so you'd be better equipped on um, how to face these challenging times when it does come upon us. So without any further ado, let's um, get into this presentation. So Brother Twain, we're here again, and we're here for this episode, uh, saying a real truth about the Sunday law. And now we're gonna go into the first stage of the Sunday law, which is called the law of attraction. Let's just take a look now at some of the spirit of prophecy quotes that confirms this very first stage. And it reads, and it reads in the signs of the times dated May the 6th, 1897. It says, trial and persecution will come to all who in obedience to the word of God refuse to worship this false Sabbath. Force is the last resort of every false religion. At first it tries attraction. As the king of Babylon tried the power of music and outward show, if these attractions, invented by men, inspired by Satan, fail to make men worship the image, 
the hungry flames of the furnace were ready to consume them. So it will be now. The papacy has exercised her power to compel men to obey her, and she will continue to do so. We need the same spirit that was manifested by God's servants in conflict with paganism. So here it's clearly lined out that first, the first thing that any false religion does is to um, try to compel people uh, to worship this false religion through attraction. Would you like to comment on this, Brother Twain? Yes, my brother. And it's very, very interesting. The Bible, um, the testimony says, um, and those bold words, it says, force is the last resort of every false religion. Mm. First, it tries to attract to attraction. And so clearly we see in the writings of Ellen White, and also the Bible also outlined that as well, that we see that um, it tried to attract first. And if you read the book of Daniel, chapter 3, you will see that similar um, type of spirit coming out. The king of Babylon, he tried to attract um, those persons, um, the suitseers, they call it governor, the sheriff, and so forth, because he was trying to attract um, those persons in Babylon because he wanted them to worship that golden image. And so, therefore, we see um, in these last days, we're going to see the similar resort, as the testimony says, they're going to try to attract before they try the last resort, which is force. Amen, Brother Twain. And this is so true. Let's move on. In the Great Controversy, page 585, dated 1911, listeners, please listen carefully to what it's saying about the Sunday law. This is why it's the first stage. Listen carefully. It says, the teachings of religious leaders have opened the door to infidelity, to spiritualism, and to contempt for God's holy law. And upon these leaders rest a fearful responsibility for the iniquity that exists in the Christian world. Yet this very class put forth the claim that the fast spreading corruption is largely attributable to the desecration of the so-called Christian Sabbath, and that the enforcement of Sunday observance would greatly improve the morals of society. So, Brother Twain, looking at this particular quote, it doesn't seem bad to try and to help the morals of, of society. Don't you agree? Yes, my brother. And um, we, we look at this um, quotation. We see clearly, based on what they're saying, this cannot really um, improve the morals of society. Mm. You know that because sin, the Bible says that in 1 John 3 verse 4 that sin is a transgression of the law. Amen. And so therefore, based on, as we look on the Ten Commandments, we see that the world falls very, very short, right? And so we've seen all, all manner of evils coming out today. Mm. And so because as they're practicing sins in their lives, you're going to have, um, you're going to reap the, um, the repercussions. The Bible says that the costless, the, um, the costless curse shall not come. Mm. And so therefore, that what they're saying right here, um, they're going to improve the moral society. We know that it's not so. Okay. But it says right here that because they open up the door of infidelity. And what is infidelity? Right? Infidelity is that is like basically you're, um, you're not adhering to the teachings of the Bible, right? You're not practicing the, um, the truth that you know, right? You're doing an another thing. And so it makes you um, basically put you in that space of infidelity. And so therefore you're taking on something else apart from the word of God. And so therefore you open up the door where all of these corruptions and so forth can take place. And so that's the reason why they are calling for something else, which is a son of law in this case, to improve, but we know that it's gonna go into a different um um on a different road in um as they try to do that. Amen. Let's press forward to see what else we have found in the spirit of prophecy concerning this very first stage, the law of attraction. 
In the Great Controversy, in page 592, dated 1911, again, it tells us the different stages of the Sunday law. It says the dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, or eventually compel all classes to honor the Sunday. So we see here that Sister White is clearly showing us that there's going to be different modes and methods used in order to try to um, get everybody to come on to honoring for Sunday. And again, just like how we said last week, Brother Twain, we don't see this law as being a climate change law. It's very clear that it's a religious law that is being forced upon the people. Let's move on to the next um, statement to see what she says concerning this. In Maranatha, dated July the 6th, 1889, it says this, as Christ was hated without a cause, so will his people be hated because they are obedient to the commandments of God. If he who was pure, holy and undefiled, who did good and only good in our world, was treated as a base criminal and condemned to death, his disciples must expect but similar treatment, however faultless may be their life, and blameless their character. Human enactments, laws manufactured by satanic agencies under a plea, listen, of goodness and restriction of evil will be exalted, while God's holy commandments are despised and trampled underfoot. So Brother Twain, can you see here that this law is going to be um, promoted as a good thing. People are not going to see that as evil. Because listen right, to what right. it says there. It says that human enactments, laws manufactured yes. by satanic agencies under a plea of what? Goodness, Goodness. and restriction right. of evil will be exalted. So it's people are going right. to be taken in because they're going to think it's a good thing because it's restricting evil it's going to help people, so why not come on board? What say you? Right. Well, um, as we, this quotation, um, what I'm seeing right here, as you stated, right, that it says Christ was aided without a cause. Mm. So it would be those persons who are true, who are following in Christ's footsteps, right? And so because today we see today, my brother, that people is calling what? good evil and evil good that's right and so therefore that's a problem right yeah. for god for those persons who want to be righteous right as i said last on the last um presentation i talk about that righteousness exalted mm -hmm. the nation and so therefore if they do not find anything in our character in your character or those who are listening online your character if your character is blameless, right? But because they want to, uh, to have their own way, even mm -hmm. though your character is blameless, they're going to put stuff, put things together to restrict those who want to follow God or those whose character are blameless, right? And so, as the testimony says again, these things were manufactured by satanic agencies, right? under a plea of goodness and so the objective is satan wants to get rid of god's commandments yeah that was his intention from in the days when he was in heaven he wanted to destroy god's government mm -hmm. moreover you have a controversy with jesus christ mm -hmm. and so therefore it tells you now if we are following jesus christ we are going to be treated the same way just as Jesus Christ was treated while he was on earth over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to get to the crux of the issue now. On this first stage, we get told how are we to act during this first stage. Because Brother Twain, there's a lot of people out there um, there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, trying to, um, they talk about the Sunday law, 
They talk about the no buy and sell. They talk about country living. But there's more in the spirit of prophecy about how we're supposed to conduct ourselves than anything else. So why hasn't this been brought out? Because this is essential information for us to know. Because um, God expects us to act a certain way during the Sunday law. And not many people know about this. Could you just say something about that, please? Well, all, to, all we are at, during the Sunday law is very, very important because the information that we're going to share is going to be very, very vital and um, beneficial to everyone, those who are self the Adventists and listening right around the world. You are going to see that how to hack during the Sunday law is going to be very, very important, as I said earlier on. And so a lot of persons have different um, opinions and different um, stuff that they put together. But we're going to see from the testimonies and also from the Bible how we are to act during the Sunday law, especially the first stage of the Sunday law. And let me say clearly that COVID-19 give us a synopsis, mm. you know, as it relates to the Sunday law. It was it started out very mildly, and every as time progressed, it, it, it get more um more things were imposed as it relates to the COVID nineteen, and so we're going to see similar things as we go through this particular stage. We're going to see how we are to act, how we are to conduct ourselves as God's people, um, during the first stage of the Sunday law. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Brother Twain. It says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, Brother Twain, it says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. How valuable will this quote be for us living in these last days, do you think, when we face in these terrible challenges well it's going to be very very valuable right it's going to be very very essential right and these tests are going to come more alive as we are about to enter that first stage that stage where the law which is the sun law is to start to be at the attraction point it's going to be um um the new theme right it's going to be um the, the, the new thing on the block and so this scripture passages from Paul, if, from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12, going to be very, very important to us as God's people because we know, um, Brother Gary, that as the Bible says that we are not going to wrestle against flesh and blood. We have to rely upon the Spirit of God to take us through those times. And the Spirit of God is going to teach us through the writings and through the Bible how we are to conduct ourselves um, in a manner that we will not be um, um, pointed out or cause an early time of trouble upon ourselves before the time. Amen, Brother Twain. Amen. So, do people know what they are doing when they are calling for a Sunday law? What do you think? Do you think people really know what they're doing, Brother Twain, when they're calling for a Sunday law? No, nobody. As a matter of fact, um, persons who are calling for a Sunday law do not know what they're doing. What they're going to get themselves in mm. you know they think that it does for as the testimony says the moral of society they think that they're gonna they're gonna stop lgbt it's gonna stop transgendering it's gonna stop um the climate change it is going to stop financial issues it's going to solve marital problems social problems every other problems that we are facing today they think that calling for us under law is going to greatly improve as the testimony says the morals of society and so therefore satan going to use that vehicle mm. the Sunday law to get um to those persons who are following jesus christ that's the end result but they do not know that mm. and also they're going to be caught in the in the also the web as well as they see what's going to unfold as um demons and all the when satan and his in missionaries, those are when when they are let loose, they're going to see what's going to happen when they were called for a Sunday law. Amen. Well, let's have a look to see what the spirit of prophecy actually says um, concerning this question. It says in the Review and Herald, 
Extra, dated December the 11th, 1888, it says the following. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue, and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whither the undercurrent is trending. They are working in blindness. They do not see that if a Protestant government sacrifices the principles that have made them a free, independent nation and through legislation brings into the Constitution principles that will propagate papal falsehood and papal delusion, they are plunging into the Roman horrors of the Dark Ages. So this is very clear. She's saying yes. that... Um, only the leaders of the Sunday law movement are concealing the true issue. But right. she says the other people who unite with them, that's the lower classes, do not know um, whether this current, this undercurrent is trending. So that's why they're going to um, butter it up, make it look very attractive so right, that right. everyone will jump on board. That's why it's called the law of attraction to begin with. Exactly. Um, so the spirit of prophecy is very clear on this. Let's move on to see what else she has to say concerning this. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, dated 1889, she has this to say about the Sunday law movement. There are many, even of those engaged in this movement for Sunday enforcement, who are blinded to the results which will follow this action. They do not see that they are striking directly against religious liberty. There are many who have never understood the claims of the Bible Sabbath and the false foundation upon which the Sunday institution rests. Brother Twain, last week we spoke about the Christian fundamentalists or Christian nationalists as they like to be called. And these right. are those type of people. They're going to be really... Um, happy to join this movement thinking that they're doing good that it's going to be restricting um evils that it's going to be um helping people's morals and in a way right. it's a good thing but they're not satan is the leading head of this and they're not going to see where satan is leading them to where it's all going to lead and it's not when it's too late that's when they're going to recognize that they've been taken down a wrong path so these um, Christian nationalists or Christian fundamentalists, these are the ones who's really going to be pushing for the Sunday law, as we discovered last week. So this is something which is very important for us to understand, Brother Twain. During this first stage of the Sunday law, it must be stressed but we may still keep the Sabbath when this law is enacted. Many people don't realize that. Would you like to add something to that, brother? Yes, and um, yes, it's very, very important, my brother. Thank you for um, reiterating that point that's on the screen, right? That we are that we are going to keep the Sabbath um, in this particular time. Yes. And um, but persons of different opinions, right? And also, we're going to know, we're going to see also how we are to conduct ourselves during these times, right? Let me say this also that persons are having the notion there is a popular theme in Adventism circle. I don't know where they get it from to say that when the Sunday law pass is going to be the close of probation for Seventh day Adventists. And that is not biblical, that's not testimonial based. And therefore, those things are not to be accepted in Adventism circles, right? The Bible tells us clearly, my brother, that in Genesis 2, chapter 2, and going, on, going down, we see that Adam and Eve, they had a test of loyalty to mm -hmm. Jehovah. God was testing Adam and Eve to see that if they're going to loyal to him, if they love him supremely above every other things um, that, he was, that, that he had created, we see that he forsook um, that um, that commitment, that test of loyalty. She ate the apple, as the devil said that to her that she shall not surely die. Mm. And so, therefore, Adam would have took also the um, 
the, the same um, basis, right? Would have ate the fruit. And so clearly we see that today our test is going to be the Sabbath. And we have to be testly, test extremely on, upon God's Sabbath before we are going to be accepted in God's kingdom. This is a very simple math. So person always said that, hey, we're just going to close provision close for us. No, we have to be tested. And also we no, have to know how to act during this time as well. Amen, brother. Thank you for um, bringing that point out too, because uh, yes, you're correct. There's a lot of um, Seminary Adventist preachers who, present true preachers that do preach that. And you're correct um, that uh, it's not biblical. So uh, brothers and sisters out there who are watching this, um, please go back and study the word for yourself. Don't get caught up with hype and um, suppositions but search the scriptures to see whether those things are so. Let's move on. In Bible Commentary, Volume 7, dated 1889. Now, this is the part now where she's showing us how we need to act. So please listen carefully. Listen to what it says. It says, Let not the commandment-keeping people of God be silent at this time as though we gracefully accepted the situation. So here we're being admonished. Now is not the time to be silent about the mark of the beast. Right. Um, this is the time where we need to start showing our true colours and to present, the present to the people the truth about God's commandments. Brother, would you like to add on that, please? Well, what I say, my brother, is very clear, right? Let us not be silent. Um, when the time has come and also on any issue regarding God's word. One is this truth. Let us not be silent, but let us act in the wisdom of God and so that we can bring the message to God's people. Amen. Right? And so I just want to say that as well. Amen. Well, let's see one, what else she says about um, the first stages and how we need to act. So we've just seen that we're not to remain silent during this time when the Sunday law is in the law of attraction stage. In Review and Herald Extra, dated December the 4th, 1889, listen to this very solemn quote. She says, there are many who are at ease, who are as it were asleep. They say, if prophecy has foretold the enforcement of Sunday observance, the law will surely be enacted. And having come to this conclusion, they sit down in a calm, expectation of the event, comforting themselves with the thought that God will protect his people in the day of trouble. But listen now, people, but God will not save us if we make no effort to do the work he has committed to our charge. As faithful watchmen, you should see the sword coming and give the warning that men and women may not pursue a course through ignorance, but they would avoid if they knew the truth. Wow. Brother Twain, how clear, how authoritative is this quote? Very, 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 very potent, right? And so we have to really um, ask God to, to help us, you know, um, in these times. And as I said, let us not um, sit down in a calm expectation right comforting ourselves with the thought that god will protect us or those people at that time right but guess what he says but god will not save us if we were make no make no effort to do the work he has committed to our charge and so we have to warn right let us be like in ezekiel 33 let us warn those persons right and if we do not warn, their blood is going to be upon our shoulder, right? And so we have to know the truth. There is no ignorance, right? God is going to accept because we are ignorant, because there is every opportunity for us now to know truth. And so God expects us to know the truth, um, to seek him where we, he, he can be found, right? And ask him to come inside our heart and so forth. Because we know that there is a very important work to be done. 
among Seventh-day Adventists and among the world that has never been seen before as we approach these last days. Mm. Amen, amen, Brother Twain. You know, it, it amazes me because there's a lot of um, Seventh-day Adventists moving to the country and some of them I've spoken to, it's like they're looking to hide. If we have that attitude of trying to hide for the time of trouble, what do you think God's going to do with us, um, brother? He will not well, save but... us because we're not making no efforts to do the work he has committed to our charge. I really want this particular quote to be imprinted in Seventh-day Adventist mind. We, when we move out into the country, whatever we're doing is for evangelism, for the end times. It's not for us to have an easy ride through this, right. um, through this crisis. That must come out of our heads. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of people, I see them, they're just, you know, they're getting into these homes. They're not even um, following the spirit of prophecy where she says that a, a room should be dedicated to um, for medical oh, ministry Lord. work or to bring in um, souls that want to know the truth. Right. A lot of people, they're just living a life of Riley and they're not even making much efforts to try and spread the truth. Right. But between, we've seen this. We've seen how many people have we live in Jamaica. We've seen how many, um, and and again, I'm not I'm not here to condemn. I'm just telling you what we what we've witnessed with our own. Right. We've seen many people come down from foreign, as they call it, from America, from Britain, coming to Jamaica, and they're building their homes. But how have you found them when it comes to evangelism, Brother Twain? Be honest. Well, well, to, truth to be told, um, there are many folks we would have um, met um, because the work that we are in. And uh, the place that we are, what we, the service that we are providing um, to the, um, the public and also the, is a Christian um, institution and so forth, place, so you're going to find a lot of like man person going to come along and so forth. But one of the things that I normally see that um, is very sad is that there is very a selfishness among us, to be honest with you. And um, persons just want to build their house, their, their country house. And... Um, they're not thinking about their brothers and their sisters. And um, they just wanted to, to come and to relax and to enjoy um, God, God bliss of creation. But they don't want to put in that work that needs to be put in, right? And we have to understand that we are lay distance. And the only way we can be saved as lay distance is when we put in the work. Mm -hmm. We have been tested and bombarded by trials and, and, and temptations. That's how we're going to be overcomers. And so if we sit down, um, in calm expectancy, waiting for some law to pass. And, and, and because we have prepared our house, I believe that God going to rain the seven last plague upon us because we are not doing anything to put forth his truth. And so I'm imploring those persons, you know, I'm not saying, um, I'm, I'm not saying that you should give all that you have, but consider the testimonies, consider what the Bible says. And as you come to build your place and so forth, it's important to follow what the, the, the Bible and testimony says and, um, and to work and also to help your fellow men also to prepare for the crisis. It's very, very important. But many persons who are looking at this, they want to get everything ready, but they don't want to um, get themselves ready for the work that need to be doing in the cities and so forth. And they don't want to get uh, others ready as well. We see that very often. And based on how um, personally, we, we see it all. That's all I have to say. Thank you for sharing that truth, brother. And again, I'd just like to say, you know, um, we're not condemning um, everybody, but we have seen it with our own eyes and it is sad. And, um, but if they think that they're going to be saved while they're not doing anything to um, support the work of what God wants us to do, they've got another thing coming, according to this quote. But let's move on anyway. In Manuscript Releases, Volume 2, and again, she's telling us how to act during this very, um, important first stage, the law of attraction stage um, concerning the Sunday law. And uh, again, this is a very important quote. Listen to it very carefully. It's found in Manuscript Releases, Volume 2, 1898. And it reads, those who compose our churches have traits of character that will lead them, if they are not very careful, to feel indignant because on account of misrepresentation, their liberty in regard to working on Sunday is taken away. Do not fly into a passion over this matter. 
but take everything in prayer to God. He alone can restrain the powers of rulers. So this is some excellent advice. Amen. God, right. through his mercy, is really showing us how we need to be acting. Because remember, during this stage, we can still keep the Sabbath. Amen. So we don't need to fly into a passion just because we can't work on a Sunday. I'll, I'll be glad, to be exactly. honest, if the truth be told, where I've got an extra day where I can do extra things. As she tells us what we can be doing during these times. And we're going to go through that very shortly. Listen to what she has to say. Walk not rashly. Let none boast unwisely of their liberty, using it for a cloak of maliciousness. But as the servants of God, honour all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honour the king. Listen carefully now. This advice is to be of real value to all who are to be brought into straight places. Nothing that shows defiance or that could be interpreted as maliciousness, must be shown. Brother Twain, what would you like to say about that powerful quote? My brother, there's a lot right here. There's a lot of meat right here. Mm. And um, there's a lot of, and when we speak, um, brethren and friends and those who are viewing, we are speaking from experiences. And um, um, what I want to share is that, as a part of my experience, is that, um, there are persons, especially in the COVID-19 time, we were there um, um, at the shop and so forth, serving persons and so on. But um, there are individuals who share the fact that they should not wear mask because if you wear a mask, you are, you, you, it's, it's, it's like God, God is dishonored in that sense, right? Yes, there are laws of the being of our bodies that we should not Fresh air, of course. But at the same time, we should be wise, right? And there, and there and we see individuals where they would have the one to take put a mask because um, to take a taxi and they have to walk um, um miles basically, or what you say, um a couple miles to come into the, the town and so forth. Mm. First we're very defiant, the one to to go to places that have other persons to buy stuff for them. And I'm saying that uh, it's very, um, it's, it's, it's very um, clear as it relates to what we ought to do in these times, right? Mm. As we're going to the Sunday law, right? And so if we are going to be that way as it relates to the COVID-19, we're going to be so defiant and so forth. The authority is going to find us out before the time, mm. right? To say that we are troublers of, um, of them. That we are troubling the people, and that we are we are um, we are unruly, we are um, lawbreakers, and so forth. And so we have to be we have to know how to, by God's grace, by God's spirit, how to um, operate in these times because there are persons they are very um, what what's the word now? Impossible. There are persons who are very zealous, overzealous, yes. and and they have to be um, checked before that time has come because they are going to give themselves away right and so my advice as we go along in this presentation as Bible say what not rashly right let us love the brotherhood um he says honor the king mm. right fear god once these things are not in um injunction as it relates to, um, to your faith once your faith is not come in play then go ahead and use wisdom to curtail your daily activity. Do not walk rashly. I'm, I'm saying it, I'm stressing it, because it's very important, because we see this a lot during the COVID-19 crisis, and people were out of place, they were, out of, they, they were doing all kinds of stuff because they did not want to follow what the government was saying. And it was have nothing to do with the seventh day Sabbath. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, let's move on. She talks more about this as we go ahead. I mean, this is amazing information for us to really um, take on board um, so that we can be prepared when this coming crisis comes. Because a lot of people, they're going to be bringing on a time of trouble upon themselves before the time, Brother Twain. And she's trying yeah. to show us, don't bring on the time of trouble before your time. So, mm -hmm. yes, you, you are right in your assertions that we need to be 
wise and walk not rashly. Let's move on to see what else she has to say. In Selected Messages, Book 3, page 396, listen carefully to what she has to say. Let not anyone make any proud boasts, either by precept or example, to show that he is defying the laws of the land. Make no resolutions as to what persons in different states may do or may not do. Let nothing be done to lessen individual responsibility. To their God they must stand or fall. Let none feel it is his duty to make speeches in the presence of our own people or of our enemies that will arouse their combativeness. And they take your words and construe them in such a way that you are charged with being rebellious to the government. For this will close the door of access to the people. So can you see, folks, viewers and listeners, that the reason why um, the Holy Spirit, working for Ellen G. White, gave us these examples to follow is because God wants us to have access to the people. But if you're going to be combative, if you're going to be proud, if you're going to be defying the law of the land, you are going to restrict your influence for good. And God does not want that for us because there's only going to be a very few people who will be preaching the truth anyway. So this is excellent information for us to take on so that we can be prepared during that time. Let's move on to see what else it has to say. In Selected message, Messages, again, the same book, book three, it says this. While we cannot bow to an arbitrary power to lift up the Sunday by bowing to it, while we, were, while we will not violate the Sabbath, which a despotic power will seek to compel us to do, we will be wise in Christ. We must say no words that would do ourselves harm, for this would be bad enough. But when you speak words and when you do presumptuous things that imperil the cause of God, you are doing a cruel work. For you give Satan advantage. Did you hear that, viewers? <laughs> we are not to be rash and impetuous, but always learning of Jesus how to act in his spirit, presenting the truth as it is in Jesus. So again, it's not being weak or being um, surrendering the truth about God when you're acting this way. You're being wise because why? You're trying to make sure that the cause of God is not imperiled. Brother Twain, what would you like to say about this powerful quote? Well, um, what I have to say regarding this one is that, you know, our words is going gonna, gonna to be very, very, or we speak at the time, going to be very, very important, mm. right? And, and if we speak presumptuously, if we speak um, irrationally, uh, if we speak with the Spirit of God, right, then Satan is going to have an edge over us, or he's going to have an advantage over us. And so we have to be like Jesus. And what I have to say um, as well is that the testimony tells us, I think in the Desire of Ages, page um, 83, I believe, um, it's, she said that we should um, look on the closing scenes of life of Christ. Yes. Take it point yes. by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing ones. And so as we grasp those scenes in Christ's life, Christ at some point in his time from Pilate's judgment all, um, going to the cross, there are times in Christ's life at that particular time, he did not speak a word. Mm. He was the king of glory. He was God. Right? He was the son of God, actually. And so he did not speak at some particular time. And there are times that when he speak. And so the point I'm driving at, or a picture I want to paint to you, those who are listening or those who are viewing, is that we have to learn the power of speech. Amen. It's very, very important. We have to know how to use words. Because in that time, our words going to use against us. Mm. Right? The Bible says by our words, we are justified, and by our words, 
we are going to be condemned. Mm. And so let us, by God's grace, with the Spirit of God, know how to give an answer as first would have asked us or of our faith with meekness and with godly fear. Amen. Let's see what else she has to say about this particular time. In Selected Messages, again, um, book three, she says this. Anything we may do that lifts up the spurious to take the place of the true and genuine Sabbath is disloyal to God. So here she's making a clear distinction that we're either following God or we're going to be following the spurious Sabbath. So we have to be very careful how we act during this first stage. And she goes on to say, and we must move very carefully, lest we exalt the decisions of the man of sin. We are not to be found in a neutral position on this matter of so great consequence. So again, she's making it absolutely clear. This first stage is not the time to pull down the banner of truths. We must uphold the bloodstained banner higher than it's ever been lifted up before. But the way we do it, it has to be done in a wise way, not in, as she said earlier, in a um, presumptuous or irrational way, but in a wise way. We go to God and ask him, how can we bring truth to people? And also at the same time where it will not hedge up the way. This is why we need to be very careful and really prayful on every step that we take during this time. Because remember, I'm going to reiterate it again. You can keep the Sabbath during this very first stage of the Sunday law. Amen. And you're going to see why. Because um, you're going to see further quotes down the line when the Sabbath will not be able to be kept. So this first stage is a stage where we can really spread the truth to people. That's right. Robert Twain, what would you like to say on this? Well, the testimony is very clear, you know, and so we're just to, as it says, let us not fall neutral mm. as it relates to the Sabbath at this time. Let us be true to God and also true to our fellow man. And I believe that when we understand that about the character of God, right, the glory of God, the character of God, when we understand that we are God ambassador, that we are God children. Mm. I believe that when the issue regarding anything with God comes up, Sabbath or anything, then because we are true and loyal to Jehovah, then we are going to give an, an answer that God will approve because we are true to God. Mm. Right? And so, so what I have to say is study and practice the truth. And when the time has come, God will exalt you like Daniel while he was in the courts of Babylon. Amen. Thank you, Brother Twain. Let's move on to see what else she says. In the Southern Work, dated 1895, she has this to say about the first stage of the Sunday Law. Refraining from work on Sunday is not receiving the mark of the beast. I'm going to repeat that. Refraining no. from work on Sunday is not receiving the mark of the beast. In places where the opposition is so strong as to arouse persecution, if work is done on Sunday, let our brethren make that day an occasion to do genuine missionary work. Well, I'm going to repeat that particular um, sentence um, in this quote because we're going to have a lot of um, so-called present truth brothers and sisters who are going to say that um, because we're obeying the law of the land, oh, you must have the mark of the beast because you're being you're following what the government tells you to do. And that's not what um, she's actually saying here. She's saying if we do refrain from work on Sunday, we will not be receiving the mark of the beast. Why? Because we'll be doing other work, genuine missionary work. So again, we'll be moving very wisely. So she's telling us what to do. So because we have a lot of defiant people amongst um, God's professed people, they want to defy everything. And they think just because um, you're following something, then you must be compromising somewhere. And that's not the truth. We just don't want to curtail our influence. 
for good. So that's why we're going to be following exactly what it says in the spirit of prophecy concerning the work that needs to be done during the first stage of the Sunday law. Very powerful and um, very powerful quotation, brother. You know, and um, is um, what I want to say as well. And this particular quotation mm. is that um, we have to really the testimony is really speaking to us. The Spirit of God is speaking to us, and I know God is speaking to somebody out, out there who are watching and listening. You know, it's very very important and. Sadly, that many um, persons within this presidential lines did not seek to bring out these points. Mm. They often talk about climate change. They talk about um, COP27 is coming up. Um, they're talking about all current events. Yes, these things are good. But the question I'm going to ask is that when Christ was on earth, what was Christ found doing? Right? Christ was always preparing his brethren, his, his, his disciples. Um, trying to let them understand that when it when when it, um when he died, always trying to bring in that particular point, but prepare mm -hmm. them also for missionary endeavors. Amen. So we have to really help the bridging to understand the issue at hand. Yes, the sun last coming, but what's the crux of the matter is really about? How are they to operate during this time? And the testimony is giving us clear indication, clear insight as it relates to what we have to do. Amen. Amen. Let's move on to see what else she has to say now. This is some very interesting quotes here. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, she has this to say. I will try to answer your question as to what you should do in case of Sunday laws being enforced. The light given me by the Lord at a time when we were expecting just such a crisis as you seem to be approaching was that when people were moved by a power from beneath to enforce Sunday observance, Seventh-day Adventists were to show their wisdom by refraining from their ordinary work on that day, devoting it to missionary effort. To defy the Sunday laws will but strengthen in their persecution the religious zealots who are seeking to enforce them. Give them no occasion to call you lawbreakers. One does not receive the mark of the beast because he shows that he realizes the wisdom of keeping the peace by refraining gives offense. So yeah. we see here that um, the Lord gave Ellen White some very clear instructions on what to do. Yes, and she says what we should do is obey the law of the land. So refrain from doing ordinary work on that day. But what we do, and this is what I love about God, every negative situation, God turns it into a positive. So yeah. that's why Satan could never win. No matter what he does, God turns it into a positive. So what, he, what God then wants us to do then is missionary work. Yeah. So there's Satan trying to restrict our influence. But at that time, it's going to further our influence because yeah. we're going to use Sunday as a day to do genuine missionary work. Isn't that amazing, um, Brother Twain? Yeah, I, and and I, I just recall that angel in Revelation 18, right? That coming to lighten up the, the, the place um, with, with, um, with the glory of God. Amen. And so I believe that a lot of persons are going to be... Um, God going to use a lot of person in that time mm. to spread his truth in that time. And the glory of God will be lightening the whole earth at that Amen. particular time. Amen. Now stay with us, folks, because I know a lot of you, you haven't seen it in this light before. And you're probably wondering whether myself and Brother Twain were, you know, some strange ones. But we're just giving you the information from what's in the spirit of prophecy. And it's always been in there but it's never been shared in the manner that it ought to be shared. So in the very first stage, she's telling us how to act and we need to be wise and we need to not curtail our influence. When people right. say to you, don't work on Sunday, don't go and work on Sunday. Instead, use that time to do genuine missionary work, to spread the truth. This is God's way of helping us to spread the truth in a more of a profound way than ever before. Let's move on to see what else she has to say. 
Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9. She says, Sunday, she, now she's telling us what we can do on this day, what missionary efforts can be done. So listen keenly. Sunday can be used for carrying forward various lines of work that will accomplish much for the Lord. On this day, open air meetings and cottage meetings can be held. House to house work can be done. Those who write can devote this day to writing their articles. This again is brilliant instructions. We don't need to guess at anything. It's all lined out in the spirit of prophecy how we need to act. Brother, is it this wonderful information? Wonderful information. And I believe that those who are listening with, the, with that here, I believe that God is going to do something for you. God is going to help you in this time as you listen to this counsel, right? God going to make a way for you in that time if you are alive and well. Amen. Amen. Let's move on now to see what else she says, how we need to act during this first stage. In Ellen G. White Manuscripts, dated 1898, page 163, she says this. If they should come here and say, you must close up your work and your presses on Sunday, I would not say to you, keep your presses going. Because a conflict does not come between you and your God. This is Amen. excellent wisdom. Just well, because they may come to us and say, you can't do secular work on that day and everything. The conflict's not with us. It's between them and God. So God's not going to look down on us unfavorably because we're going to obey the law of the land and do genuine missionary work. He's going to look very unfavorably on those who are trying to um, come in between us and our God. So we have to remember this. God is in control. In Manuscript Releases, Volume 3, page 1889, again, She's given us good, relevant advice on how to act during the very first stage of the Sunday law. Listen to what it has to say. We should not feel it enjoined upon us to irritate our neighbours who idolise Sunday by making determined efforts to bring labour on that day before them, purposely to exhibit an independence. Our sisters need not select Sunday as the day to exhibit their wash, their washing. Mm, now, I know again, um, Brother Twain, a lot of our viewers and listeners are thinking these people seem to be honoring Sunday, mm. but we're not. What we're doing is obeying the law of the land so that we can have an influence for good on a Sunday. Mm, we can do the missionary work. We can bring truth to people. We don't want exactly. to bring on the time of trouble upon us before the time. So God has given us wisdom, which we all need to have on how to act during this stage. And I hope that you will remember these things because the Sunday law is very close upon us. So if yeah. we remember these things and practice them even now, then when that time comes, it will, it will become second nature for us. Amen. And, um, you know, sometimes you wonder, oh, God, um, we're going to be um, fulfilled. Mm. Because it tell, it tell us that um, the world, the world going to get an opportunity to know God. And I believe this is one of the time where the Spirit of God, remember, the Spirit of God is, 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 is withdrawing from the earth, right? But also the Spirit of God is going to be poured out in God's sake. The latter rain, right? God is going to pour His Spirit upon, uh, upon His people to do a mm. specific work. And I, and I believe this is a time where God is going to use us mightily because this is a time where we get opportunity now. Remember, there's no work. Nobody can call you on Sunday to do anything anymore. Right? This day is devoted um, to, um, to, to go to Sunday service. Mm. But because you're a Seventh-day Adventist, you're going to use this day to do genuine missionary work. Amen. So you're going to go house to house. You're going to write articles. You're going to do things and help those persons who are keeping Sunday to know that the, the, the right day to keep is the seventh day Sabbath. And that opportunity is going to be given to all of us yes. so that we can help those who are in Babylon to come out of Babylon mm -hmm. and they, so that they can be saved. Amen. Amen. 
Let's have a look at another quote now to do with the first stage. It says here, in the Review and Herald, again, this has given us excellent advice on how to act during this stage. In Review and Herald, dated March the 26th, 1908, listen to what the spirit of prophecy tells us. There is work for all to do in order that the simple truths of the word of God may be made known. The words of scripture should be printed and published just as they read. It would be well if the 19th and the greater portion of the 20th chapters of Exodus with verses 12 to 18 of the 31st chapter were printed just as they stand. And this is basically talking about the law of God, those particular, and the Sabbath in particular. Crowd these truths into small books and pamphlets and let the word of God speak to the people. You know. When a discourse concerning the law is preached, but it is right to the point, if you have any means of doing so, get it into a printed leaflet. You know. Then when those who plead for Sunday laws meet you, Place these leaflets in their hands. Tell them that you have no discussion over the Sunday question, for you have a plain thus saith the Lord for the keeping of the seventh day. So this is why, again, I'm saying on the first days you can still keep the Sabbath because you're going to have your neighbours and friends who are going to come to you and say, how come you're not going to, um, how come you don't want to exalt this day? And you're going to tell them the reason why. And you're not going to tell them verbally. You're going to have stuff ready for them, printed materials, which they can take away with them and argue by themselves in their own room and, and allowing God's word to speak. And this yeah. is the problem I find today, uh, Twain. We're not allowing God's word to speak. And this is why we're doing these presentations. You're not going to hear every time us making up our own suppositions was showing you from a thus saith the Lord about the Sunday law and how to act. And it's telling us what we need to do. So we're seeing here, again, we have to be evangelistic minded during this right. very first stage of the Sunday law. And mm. if we are, God will protect us and save us. But if we're not, as it said previously, he will not save us. So let's just have these things in mind, folks, and let's not resist the Spirit of God telling us to act wisely during these times. Amen. Amen. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, listen again, it's telling us how, what type of evangelistic work that we need to be doing. It says, take the students out to hold meetings in different places and do medical missionary work. They will find the people at home and will have a splendid opportunity to present the truth. This wow. way of spending Sunday is what? Always acceptable to the Lord. So you haven't received a mark of the beast if you're going out doing evangelistic work. If you're not working on that day, it's your secular work, but you're doing missionary work. In fact, God looks favorably upon you for doing it. Right. Robert Twain, what would you like to add on this particular quote? Let me say that these are splendid, very powerful quotation, very direct, mm. and it's really helping God's people how they are to tread on these times as we're heading into the future. And let me say that God is going to give all of us opportunities to witness for him. If you see that there is a correlation as it relates to the Daniel when he was in Babylon, right, and Joseph when he was Egypt, God used them and God put them in places where they have to defend their faith. That's and God is going to give us that opportunity in the first stage of the Sunday law to defend our faith. Is that wonderful? Amen. It is. It is. The Sabbath that we are that we ready for every week. The Sabbath we, we, we go to church on Sabbath and we talk about God's goodness and so forth. But mm -hmm. now we're going to get the opportunity now to really share it with the world about who God is and so forth. And the Sabbath and so on. And God, God, God gave us instruction. Clearly, we can look um, in Exodus um, chapter 19 and 20, or to write out these um, stuff, mm. put them in complex. These are very good instruction 
that we need to take note of so that we can prepare ourselves and our children, right, when that time has come. It's not to, to fix our mind upon the, the things of this world, right, in, uh, to end, um, and go for mind in, in the social media and these things. These things, we have to take these truth now and really put them in practice, right? Let us try to put these things in, in, in and, and start to live them out so that when the time has come, God can use of use us even more to help those who are in Babylon, right? So that they can receive the truth of God. I believe God is a loving God, He's a wise God, and God wants to save you and I. And that's the reason why He's given us this opportunity this time to listen to these words because He loves you with an everlasting love and He wants to save you in your in His kingdom. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask you a question, uh, Twain, again, because, um, you know, this is for really for our viewers. Why do medical missionary work? What's the main reason why God wants us to do that? Um, apart from um, evangelistic reasons, what is the other main reason why we should do medical missionary work? Well, clearly, we know that sickness is in the land, mm -hmm. right? And COVID-19, again, I'm using COVID-19 as a, as a marker. COVID-19 shows that because of sickness is in our bodies, if man would have invented or manufactured by Satan, as testimonies are invented by man, we don't know what would have happened. Um, we know that there was a, something going around, right? COVID-19, as they call it. But it takes lives. It takes lives of men because the immune system was weak and so forth, mm -hmm. right? And so... God give us the medical missionary work to help those persons who are sick, who are suffering, so that they can be healed. Because when your the body is healed, naturally the mind will start to be to, um, to be healing. Because then now you can administer the spiritual need to, to that person, and that's the reason why that entering wedge, that right arm, going to use to help those um, to know the truth when Christ is going to preach because they're going to get better, basically. Amen. Well, let's just see why that's the, another reason why we need to do medical missionary work. Thank you, brother. On Councils on Health, page 506, 1892, listen very carefully about what she says about medical missionary work. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. Exactly what you said, brother. And those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. So again, the medical missionary work is there to be used as a helping tool to try and bring right. people to Christ during these times. Right. And the reason why there's going to be plenty of suffering ones is because of this. Calamities will be in the land. Amen. Remember the first um, one we said, Twain, how the destructions are coming on the land and they're going to be huge destructions. Okay. People won't be able to cope with all these problems. Okay. So if God's people are ready, and we're going to be doing um, other topics on this, we're going to be doing topics on end time medical missionary kits, what you're exactly. going to need. Exactly. So yes. please stay with us, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on these very important topics. I'm a medical missionary. Brother Twain's a medical missionary. Our wives are medical missionaries. So we know what to do. So we're going to be doing presentations called end time medical missionary training. And we're going to show you very important things that you're going to need in your end time medical missionary kit, which right. will uh, enable you to be effective during these times. So please have these things in your heads. We're going to look at something else now. Now, this is going to be a bit of a test, and especially to our viewers. And I really want you to really understand this next quote. 
because the pastors in the churches are going to be using this quote to justify in reverencing Sunday. Wow. And we're going to have to give a reason why they cannot use this quote to reverence Sunday. Let's go through this quote. And it's found in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 233. Listen very carefully, because this really worried me when I first read this quote. Listen carefully. It says, Sunday can be used for carrying forward various lines of work that will accomplish much for the Lord. Whenever it is possible, let religious services be held on Sunday. Make these meetings intensely interesting. Sing genuine revival hymns and speak with power and insurance of the Saviour's love. Now, folks, I'm not too sure about you, but when I first read this, it worried me. So I was thinking, why has the servant of the Lord told us to hold religious services on that day? Doesn't it mean that we're honoring the Sunday? And it really bugged me for a very long time. But when you study it out, you will see the reason why she says this. That's why it's good to always search things because God does eventually lead you to it. Let's have a look. So why does she say that religious services should be held on Sundays? Let's hear, let's hear her own interpretation on the matter. And this is found in Ellen G. White Manuscripts, page 131, dated 1907. Listen carefully. We are to meet this issue, the Sunday law issue, by the way, by preaching the word of the living God. The word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. As we present the Sabbath truth direct from the word of God, tracing it through from creation to the new earth, the testimony of the living God as recorded in his word will have a powerful effect on those who hear. Our strength in meeting the Sunday law issue is to be found in bringing to the attention of the people a plain, thus saith the Lord. God is brilliant he's going to allow us to use religious services why so that we can preach the truth on sunday regarding the sabbath isn't that amazing so that's yeah. why we hold religious meetings folks so that we can bring truth to the masses let's see another quote in manuscript releases volume 13 dated 1896 it has this to say about that very same issue. The zeal of those who obey the Lord will be increased as the world and church unite in making void the law. Every objection raised against the commandments of God will make way for the advancement of truth and enable its advocates to present its value before men. There is a beauty and force in the truth that nothing can make so apparent as opposition and persecution. So she's saying because Satan's going to try to hedge up the way, God is going to use what could be for evil for good. So when we hold religious meetings, which we'll be allowed to, on a Sunday, we'll be able to present truth to the masses. Brother Twain, right. isn't that a marvelous thing that God's going to do? Oh, definitely. Definitely, Brother Gary. And it does show the wisdom of God, the foreknowledge of God. Yes. Right? And the reason why nothing take God by surprise. Amen. Right? And so if we really stick to God, stick close to God, then God will show us great and mighty things. As the Bible says, things that we don't know enough of. Mm. And Amen. say, well, let us trust God. Trust his word. And I believe that as we see this quotation and as we go into those times, Mm. God going to enable us to meet the challenges as they come because God have an antidote for every problem. Every problem. And so we don't have to guess or spell about the Sunday law. God is showing us clearly before mm. how we are to act during these times. And I believe that God favor you among everybody else, right? Especially those who are self the Adventists, right? The greatest Wealth, the knowledge of truth ever given by mortals were given to us to help us and to help the world to know that 
Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and that he's coming back for a pure set of people. And so let us stick to God. And I believe that when we stick to God, then God will stick with us. Amen. Jehovah is so wise. He makes Amen. no mistakes. He sees the end from the beginning. He is the God that can turn every negative situation into a positive one. Why worry, Brother Twain? Why worry? So, again, I just want to reiterate, holding religious services on Sunday will give us the opportunity to present the true Sabbath and other biblical truths. So, folks, listeners, viewers, please remember this. And when you see your colleagues holding religious services, please don't judge them um, too harshly and think that they're honouring Sunday. A lot of them won't be. A lot of them will be presenting truth on that day. They're doing genuine missionary work. Because sometimes a lot of um, Seventh-day Adventists, we jump to conclusions too early and we, um, uh, and we don't search out a matter first. So, but what I'm, the reason why I shared that quote to you from Testimonies from the Church, Volume 9, was that there's going to be um, unworthy ministers who are going to use that quote to justify reverence in Sunday on, 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 on that day. So just be aware that they don't right. use it to try to um, conceal evil. Amen. A lot of people have been talking, oh, it sounds like we're reverencing that day or oh, we're honoring that day. But let's see what the spirit of prophecy has to say on this. In Selected Messages, Book 1, dated 1889, listen carefully to what she has to say about Sunday. We must take a firm stand that we will not reverence the first day of the week as the Sabbath, for it is not the day that was blessed and sanctified by Jehovah. And in reverencing Sunday, we should place ourselves on the side of the great deceiver. So here, again, God giving her instructions on wisdom, telling us, that even though we're going to be doing missionary work, even though we're going to be doing religious meetings on that day, be very careful not to reverence that day. Brother Tane, right. what would you like to add to that? The point I want to bring out as well is that um, it's very, very clear that we should know the difference between Sunday and Sabbath because persons um, might have that mindset you know, going on, going into Sunday, think it maybe a Sabbath service. Mm. We should be very sober, be very vigilant about the different days and so forth. Sunday it does use in number one as a day to do medical missionary work or missionary 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 work and also medical missionary work. Mm. Right? It's a day that we use to help those who are going to church on Sunday um, show them the truth. So that they can have accept it. So we're going to organize Bible studies. We're going to organize things um, so that we can reach these folks. Amen. That day is the day of the service where we're organizing ourselves, right, to go out to reach these folks, either by holding a religious meeting, maybe at our church, or maybe going into their homes. But we have to be very mindful that we're not reverence this day, right? And Amen. so, and that's the reason why. We must have Christ solidified in our mind. We must settle in the truth, both intellectual and spiritually. So, because when that time has come, we're gonna we're gonna be we, we, we're gonna go into different phases, and so we have to know God for ourselves at that time. Amen. Let's just remember, folks, that all we do we just use Sunday as a vehicle to spread truth. Right. That's all it, it is. It, so. If, if you have that mindset, you are not reverenced that day. You'd see it as a day that you're working. So right. let's, let's just remember that. We're just using Sunday as a vehicle to spread truth. Amen. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, again, listen to what the, um, the Spirit of Prophecy has to say about reverence on Sunday. The Sabbath is the Lord's test, and no man, be he king, priest, or ruler is authorized to come between God and man. Those who seek to be conscience for their fellow men place themselves above God. 
those who are under the influence of a false religion who observe a spurious rest day will set aside the most positive evidence in regard to the true Sabbath. They will try to compel men to obey the laws of their own creation, laws that are directly opposed to the law of God. The law for the observance of the first day of the week is the production of an apostate Christendom. In no case are God's people to pay it homage. I couldn't... Mm -hmm. It couldn't be made any clearer, Brother Twain. Mm -hmm. In Selected Messages, Book 3, listen again to what she says about Reverend Sunday. There are some trying testimonies to be manfully borne by Sabbath keepers and some bitter persecution finally endured. Let no resolu resolutions be passed here which will encourage half-hearted service or cowardly hiding our light under a bushel or under a bed, for we will certainly be tried and tested. Be sure the Sabbath is a test question, and how you treat this question places you either on God's side or Satan's side. The mark of the beast is to be presented in some shape to every institution and every individual. So here she's given us advice that we are not allowed to keep quiet about the issues that are at stake during this time. We have to make, as she says, a not cowardly hiding our light under a bushel or under a bed. So again, keep in mind, we use Sunday as a vehicle to spread truth. God will be on your side to spread the truth. But let's not be cowards in spreading the truth. Brother Twain, what would you like to add? Well, my brother, it is very clear. The testimony speaks to us very clearly. And we don't have to guess and spell out anything. And so what I want to bring, what he says right here, he says, be sure the Sabbath is a test question. Right? And so, and that, that, that point I want to really bring out is a test right and so persons who are off-hearted those who are cowardly mm. and and they light under a bushel will be tried and be tested mm. as i said before the sabbath when the sunday law comes probation will not be closing for seventh day adventist is it a test Amen. is a time where it's like is a time where every well every seventh event is going to get a, a test it's like they're, they're sitting on exam right and we are going to go into different phases of the exam or the test, right? Mm -hmm. And so, or we re or we react, or we know it's, it's going to be upon the Spirit of God and how we know God's Word and how we practice God's Word going to help us um, carry us through these, these times, right? And so, let me say though, person going to gonna die, especially as we go through different, as we go through different presentation um, the next week and so we're going to see the person going to die um, as it relates to when persecution comes. Person going to die. But probation not going to close until the seven last plague when the um, um, prayer uh, before the seven last plague. Just in that time period probation going to close and then the seven last plague going to step in. And so person need to know this. Mm. Right? Mm. That this is going to be the last point where God going to going to give us, um, we call it mercy, as it relates to, to help us and, um, to, 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 to say that we really love him. And so we're going to get this opportunity to vindicate if we truly love God. And if we truly love God, then when the Sabbath issue comes regarding Sunday, then we are going to take the side of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as we come to the end of this one, Brother Twain, on the law of attraction, let's just quickly do a quick overview of what we've learned through the spirit of prophecy concerning the first stage of the Sunday law, the law of attraction. So the first thing we'd like to mention is this, you will still be able to keep the true Sabbath during this time. Right. Only the first day of the week will be protected or enforced by law. Control your passions regarding this. Amen, amen. Second point we need to bring out is this, 
you may be offered bribes or persuaded to honor or promote Sunday. Be aware of it. The third point we need to bring out is this. You will not be receiving the mark of the beast when you hold religious meetings on Sunday or do missionary work, as this will give you the opportunity to present the truth. However, we must be careful not to reverence that day by calling it holy or the Sabbath or keeping it as the Sabbath. The fourth point we need to bring out is this. You will not be receiving the mark of the beast when you close up or stop working on that day. However, we must not show any defiance of the Sunday law by irritating our neighbours who believe in the Sunday law or intentionally work on that day. And number five, we are not to remain silent concerning the Sunday law issue. And number six, we have been instructed to know and to do medical missionary work and literature evangelism work. These are the things as God's people living in the last days, we must really focus on. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to the, to, to the end of the first stage of the Sunday law, which was the law of attraction. Again, I really hope you found that a blessing. We had a lot to go through and it's very difficult to try and um, go through everything in a timely manner because it's, it's a, such a big information uh, uh, available in the spirit of prophecy concerning it. So again, I hope you found it a blessing. We try to condense and share as much as we possibly can regarding the real truth about the Sunday law. Again, if you've missed anything or you'd like to um, go through anything, you can download this presentation in the description box, or you could just re-watch this video again. But Brother Twain, what would you like to say in closing on that particular first stage? Well, what, what I want to say is that um, God has shown us very clearly how we are to operate during the first stage of the Sunday law. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, COVID-19 would have teach us lessons that we can that we can learn from as we go into the Sunday law. Um, for instance, even this one, um, Sunday. Sunday was a lockdown day, and we get opportunity where we could stay at home and, you know, first get time with their family. But they were just, what they're trying to do as well, they're trying to put in that mindset when the time has come that you're going to get time for family and so forth, right? And so, and also those persons, um, especially those persons were Jamaicans, you know, I'm speaking to you um, as well. You know, we know that we are very passionate people. We are very um, zealous people. And when we are, when we're, we, we can zealous in any different cause, what I'm saying to you that, um, you know, ask God to help you, you know, help us to be conformed. And so when that time has come, we will not um, fly up in a passion and we will not do things unwisely. I'm, I'm speaking generally for everyone as well learn how to by god's grace to have self-control in a crisis Mo moses was the meekest man mm. on the face of this earth and so therefore we can have the meekness of moses also the meekness of christ and so the bible says again blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth amen well thank you brother twain um for this and to our listeners and viewers out there please Continue to stay with us because we're going to deal with stage two, which is very, very important. And you're yes. going to see again how the spirit of prophecy lines it all out. So there'll be no guesswork, no speculation. And it's good to study these things out now so that when these times come, we will show ourselves approved unto God. Let's end yeah. off on a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, as your people. We just wanna thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you that you have given us spiritual intelligence found in your word well over a hundred years ago on how to prepare, how to act during the Sunday law crisis. Father, it's not your will for anyone to perish, but Lord, people will perish 
if they do not take heed to your instructions. Help us, Lord, to rein in our passions so we do not bring in a time of trouble before the time. Help us to remember, Lord, that we're here to be witnesses and champions for your truth. Continue to remind us, Lord, that we must follow what you want us to do. Let your will be done and not our will. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.